Hello and welcome to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the first part of the Castrol Toyota Tom Supra GT in 124th scale by Tamiya. Now as with any build like this I started with the bodywork looking around for mould lines. There are only four kind of really prominent ones on the front and rear bumper. I used my uh, UMP thinny sticks to sand those away and also drilled the holes for the wing mirrors. There's also optional wing mirrors which go on the doors instead, though I believe that that is for a different version of the Supra GT. Then these wheel arches need to be put into place. Much better idea to put these on now rather than after painting. Made sure to sand all the burrs off and these fit really nicely. They even fit into place without any glue. Used a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to glue those into place and did the same with these small vents on the bonnet. Checked it over once primed for those mould lines again using grey primer and then gave it three coats of TS26 Pure White from Tamiya. Pretty happy with that. Now I chose to add the semi-gloss black accents such as around the windscreen at this point. My aim is to later give this a semi-gloss clear coat over the top. I figured it would be much easier to do these parts now rather than when they are decaled. I've seen some people give the inside of these lights a coat of silver. I think that uh, this will allow the uh, headlights to stand out. Use masking tape to do the moulded window trims. To do these side windows I pushed in the masking tape with a cocktail stick and then used a new craft blade like this to cut around the edges. Then pushed it in with my finger again and gave it a coat of semi-gloss black from Revell. Make sure to push the tape in really carefully so that you don't get any bleeds. Pretty happy with that. Did the same for the other side. Good thing with the Revell acrylic is that mistakes can be scraped away quite easily. Just having a look around to make sure there aren't any mistakes like here so I can go over them like I have done here. Now for the decals I like to start with the sort of largest ones, the ones that sort of don't come in multiple parts. That included these window ones that go around the top. This will also be a judge of how good my uh, painting was. These are on top of some micro set and then I used some UMP strong decal solution to help them adhere as best as possible. And I'm rolling a wet cotton bud over the edge to try and remove any air pockets or excess moisture. Now these ones here are particularly challenging. Firstly, they need to go around the vents. So this number 36 needs to be in exactly the right place and then it needs to go around the headlight at the front as well. Just like before, I used some micro set on the body that lets you uh, maneuver it quite easily. And then once I was happy with the final position, I gave it a coat of UMP strong decal solution. The other side is slightly easier, but you do need to still make sure that it fits in well with the vents. These ones around the side skirts of the car benefit from some decal solution to help them adhere. I 
Remember to look really carefully at source pictures to make sure that you're getting the position of all of these decals correct. Now these ones here are particularly challenging, started by putting some micro sets down to help the movement, then start with this uh, green and red one that goes sort of around the wheel arch, and then this smaller green one goes into uh, this spot here, just around the uh, vents for the uh, rear wheels. These two should mesh up as well as possible, and then the red one goes around the top. I think it's much better to do the kind of red and green swirls before you then go on to the sponsors as the red and green swirls need to be in specific places whereas the sponsors can be moved around a little bit to accommodate what room there is left. As you can see here, these castrol decals need the red and green swirls to be in place for you to know where to put them. The UMP strong decal solution is really useful here to flow around some of the unusual body lines. This one here on the back, for instance, needs to go over the top of this clip here. Once I've clear coated that, I'll paint back over the top of it. Then the red swirl here goes underneath, and then this one goes on top of the tail lights. It doesn't give you an instructions for which order to do the decals, but really kind of use your intuition, your judgment about which ones to lay down first. These ones here are almost missed. Now for the vents on the bonnet, you've got the number 36 and the red and green swirls that go over these difficult parts made up of five separate parts. Now a decal solution such as UMP Strong or Microsol is really useful here. I was getting on quite well with these but unfortunately just when I'd finished had an accident and some of them got stuck to my finger and they couldn't be salvaged. So I made sure that all the decal solution had dried away and then got out some Revell black acrylic and painted the 36 on. Not perfect, but best of a bad situation. I built the rear wing before decaling it. It's a castrol decal that goes on the top and the bottom and then a green square logo that goes on the side. For the vent in the front, I built this up and decaled it separately. It's good to decal it keeping it apart because the Tom's logo here goes on the second part of the vent, not the front one. Then you can glue these two together. I used Tamiya Extra Thin Cement but I used some super glue to do the rear wing. There's some little pinpoints to show you exactly where it needs to go. Now for this side here, I decided to use a lot more patience, put down the UMP strong decal solution to start with. 
I used the wet cotton bud to very gently push it down. And I also found that if I was careful, a craft blade was pretty good at pushing it into place. Then I made sure not to touch the body at all for a few hours. And here is the bodywork so far. This is a challenging livery which is worth taking its time on. I did have one issue which is I used some extra strong decal solution on the Castrol logo on this side and the oil fell off. However, I've got some help coming from Chris Pelling. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you soon.